In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> By your help, we beseech you, O Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world, your son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O oh, my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O oh, my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. Jesus became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, Come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that you may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. I would speak uh, to you of delay, of deliverance, and a directive. First of all, regarding delay, Jesus hears that Lazarus is gravely ill, and it says because he loved him, he delayed two days in going. 
That doesn't, it shocks us, doesn't it, right? You want him to rush to his side. But he, he explains, this is not to end in death, and this is so that the glory of God will be experienced. Sometimes God allows us to enter into periods of suffering and difficulty so that he can show us his glory and, and show us what real deliverance is really all about. And so again, the first thing I would simply speak to you about is that delay. If God is delaying in your life, remember, you got to break a few eggs to make an omelet and it's microwave meals aren't as good as meals that you take a long time to prepare, you know? So we all want things fast, but at the end of the day, the Lord is working his purposes out, and that delay is for a good purpose if he is delaying. I don't know if you've noticed, but he's not in a big hurry usually. God is not usually in a big hurry. All right. I would also speak to you then of deliverance. There comes then this moment of deliverance, but notice, notice, faith is required. Do you believe this, Martha, that I am the resurrection and the life? Do you believe who I am? Yes, Lord, I believe. Every miracle that the Lord worked required some manifestation of faith on the part of the one who believed. So again, if you want to see miracles, grow in your faith. Grow in your faith. Now again, we therefore see there is this great deliverance that takes place. Now finally, we come then to this directive. As Lazarus is brought out of the tomb, there is this instruction to all of us. Untie him and let him go free. The Lord has delivered Lazarus, but even when we bring a young child out of the baptismal font, that work has just begun. We've got to untie that child and let that child go free. We've got to uh, bring about the fullness of life that the Lord has given. And then for all of us, if someone is delivered from difficulties or doubts, if someone has trouble and are delivered, you have to remember, you have to remember, part of our role is to untie them and let them go free. We are part of Christ's work of deliverance. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the great of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and on the, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, nor has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God our Father has given us all through Christ a share in the power of his resurrection, we turn to him in prayer, who is the source of all life and goodness. For the church, the bride of Christ, may she always proclaim the saving power of Christ's resurrection, by which we are raised from death of sin to the new life of grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public officials, may they fully appreciate and protect the immortal and destiny and dignity of every human being, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an openness to life within the sacraments of marriage, an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the permanent diaconate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in sorrow, may they attach their suffering to Christ who understands their sorrows and will give them comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Father, your Son is our resurrection and life. May we live this new life of grace which he has won for us through Christ our Lord.
Now please pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus his friend, and as eternal God he raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one course of exalt and praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you found us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And as always, we, we thank all of you who attend these masses that we uh, provide for the folks at home. And we uh, also thank the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception and all of our many benefactors. And, uh, I, I want to also thank the choir of Holy Comforter St. Cyprian Parish here in Washington, D.C., and I'm the proud pastor there as well. And uh, good deacon Cyrus next to me is also at the parish. So, and our other deacon here, he's uh, not from our parish, but it's okay. <laughs> for, for those of you at home, remember, we love you, we pray for you, and ask you to pray for us, and your prayers are very, very powerful. We need them. Pray for us, pray for the church, pray for the world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to tell and testify to the goodness of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
If you cannot attend Mass and would like to receive the Eucharist at home, please contact your parish directly. To help support the TV Mass from the Basilica, call 1-866-507-8757 or visit faithdirect.net slash basilicatvmass. Oh, yeah.